Medical researchers estimate that over 90% of diseases are stress-related. We know that stress is physical response to a feeling situation or event that takes us off of our senses of well-being. I want you to know that stress was part of human life throughout history. As a fact, in the past three generations from the 1950s to 2020, in Western countries, humans had less stress than ever before. We had no major wars, plagues, famines or hunger. We have advanced medical treatments, good housing conditions, and money to express our freedom. Just a hundred years ago, none of it was like that for the majority of the population. Now we have an abundance of everything to ease our life and make it better. Yet, we are more stressed and that's affect our health and well-being. So, what has changed to make most of us stressed and sick? To solve the problem, first, we need to know the difference between internal and external stress. If in the past, human experienced mainly external stress, today we are dying from internal stress. You see, external stress comes from injury, trauma, poor working conditions, and from pollutions and toxins in our environment. It can come from bad relationships and from all kinds of life difficulties and challenges that come during our lifetime that we cannot avoid. Getting married, buying a house, working and raising kids are common stressors that affect many of us. External stress also comes when we get sick from bacteria, viruses and fungi found in poor sanitation conditions. You can agree with me or not, but I don't think any of us wants to deal with the stressors of the past centuries, right? Today we can better deal with it. There are professional experts to aid us in many life difficulties. Therefore, I suspected that internal stress makes the external harder to manage and that leads to most chronic diseases affecting our society. Now I want you to know that internal stress is a phenomenon of humans who live with fears and wrong beliefs about life and health. Here are two leading factors to chronic internal stress. The first is associated with what we eat and the ability of the digestive system to absorb vitamins, minerals and other essential nutrients. Experts are telling us that nutrients deficiencies lead to chronic diseases. Not just our food is deficient in essential nutrients, but we also witness a continuous rise in digestive disorders. That by itself could be alarming news. Many symptoms show us a shortage of nutrients and accumulation of toxins in our body. Industrialized food isn't just deprived of nutrients, it also causes digestive problems. The leading common complaint is constipation, which is an accumulation of toxins. The second factor for internal stress is associated with the wrong perspective about life. It manifests in our attitude, thoughts, anticipation and imagination. All this is stored in the memory of the subconscious mind. Living in modern countries influences our behavioral response to addictions. And if speaking about addictions, 
70% of Americans are addicted to fattening food and are overweight or obese. About 20% are addicted to nicotine. And that's without mentioning alcoholism and the use of recreational drugs. Digestive issues and addictions decreases overall health and fitness level while increasing chronic physical and mental diseases. Nowadays, behavioral addictions affect young adults and kids too. In my clinics, I saw firsthand the difficulties of helping my clients who had behavioral addictions. It is like convincing a house slave to hate his master. If you ever try to quit your addiction, you know how difficult it is to dislike what relaxes you and makes you feel good. It can be food, nicotine, alcohol, or drugs. That's why many addicts develop chronic diseases and for that they take medications. So how did we become a stressful society and why? It all starts after birth and it's controlled by the FDA, the CDC, and your medical provider. After birth, we are injected many times with immune suppressant called childhood vaccines. In addition to that, at six months, over 50% of infants fed on industrialized formula. Parents don't see the connections between the two and increasing childhood chronic diseases. Later on, children are exposed to the educational system, which demands faster childhood development, high stakes testing, and overstuffed schedules. Afterwards, kids and teenagers are exposed to the media, which just added to their stressful life that causes developing children to have less sleep at night. Can you imagine how much stress the body has the following day after a sleepless night? Then young adults engage in the life rat race. That's why in midlife we see more stressed and addicted people which leads to rise in chronic diseases. Science recognizes stress as genetic, yet just like children picking up their parents' eating and smoking habits, they are also picking up their parents' response to stress. Now you know what causes most chronic internal and external stresses. It is not the life challenges that comes in our way, but it is our government-approved nutritional, medical, and educational programs. To that, you can add the mainstream media and the social media on the internet. All of them are the underlying reasons for chronic stress and diseases. That brings me to the inevitable question. Why our government wants us to be chronically sick and stressed. Stress and illnesses together or separately causes anxiety and fear of the unknown future. The government knows that fear makes its citizens more obedient. That's exactly where the establishment want us to be to control us. It will continue as long as the government keeps us uneducated about the real contributors to addictions and diseases. The FDA and the CDC are holding the germ theory from 170 years ago as the guidelines for treating diseases. Yet, there are still indisputable facts. First, they cannot find a cure for chronic diseases. Second, chronic diseases are on the rise among all ages, 
from young to old. Here, I think you need to question the quality of the air you breathe, the liquid you drink, and the food you eat. They are not the breath of life or the taste of health at all. They are designed by engineers to make you addicted to their products while making you ignorant about your deteriorating health condition and be lazy to change it. Then, when you get sick, out of fear of dying from diseases, you rush to the doctor and get medication to mask the symptoms. Medications for chronic diseases don't cure, but they make you chronically sick forever. And all of this carries the seal of approval by the FDA. Many of my clients were dealing with stress. In my educational programs, I explained that stress most likely comes from diet, lifestyle, medications, and from constipation, which causes the accumulation of toxic waste in the body. While we cannot avoid life challenges that might be very stressful events, however, we can limit or even avoid internal stress. How to do it? Well, here too, education is the best solution. That's why I put together the health puzzle. I believe one day you too would like to find out what really causes so many diseases. Whenever you are ready to face the truth, I will be there to guide you. Until then, goodbye.